The Nintendo Switch has no shortage of controllers. There's Joy-Con, Pro Controllers, and many third-party alternatives. There are even adapters that allow you to pair more controllers via USB or Bluetooth. The limitations with these is that you can only connect one controller at a time per adapter. Hello folks, Manito here. In this video, I'll show you how to freely use your Bluetooth and USB controllers with your Nintendo Switch. We'll be installing the Sys modules known as Mission Control and SysCon. Mission Control lets you pair almost any Bluetooth controller to your Switch, while SysCon allows your Switch to read inputs from almost any wired USB controller. There are some limitations though, and you can read them in the respective GitHub pages. What's really neat is that both of these Sys modules work together at the same time. They're also safe to use while playing online. A big advantage that Mission Control has over a USB adapter is that Mission Control supports up to 8 controllers at once, since it's using the controller just as a switch controller, and not through an adapter. Now let's go over what's required. You will need Atmosphere custom firmware. I used to have a standalone YouTube video for installing Atmosphere, but it got axed by Nintendo. I'll leave a link in the description to my Wi-Fi Safe Smash Ultimate Modding Guide, which covers Atmosphere setup for those unfamiliar with Switch modding. And I'll also include a written guide to Atmosphere if you don't want to mess with Smash mods. I also recommend getting Tesla Menu if you want the option of toggling these Sys modules on and off. My Switch modding tutorial playlist will also be available in the description. Before we get started, make sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't and click the bell icon to turn notifications on. Then you can be notified when I upload new Switch tutorials. I also have a community Discord server where you can talk and game with me and other members of the community. With that out of the way, let's get to the tutorial. Put your Switch SD card in your computer or connect via FTP. FTP is a way to transfer files wirelessly to your Switch. You can find a tutorial on that in my tutorial playlist. Go to the first tutorial link in the description. It will take you to Mission Control GitHub. Mission Control is being developed by NDeadly. Huge shout out to NDeadly for this amazing Sys module. If we scroll down a bit, you can find more info on the currently supported features, what controllers work, and what is planned for the future. I'd recommend taking a look at this. Click on Releases, and scroll down to missioncontrol.zip to download the latest release of Mission Control. At the day of this recording, it's at version 0.5.0. When you download it, the version number may be higher. If it is, that's okay. The installation will still be the same. Open the zip and drag the folders to your SD card. This process will be the same if you're updating the app to a newer version. Click the next tutorial link to go to the GitHub page for SysCon. SysCon is being developed by Cathery. Huge shout out to Cathery. You can find more info about the program and its limitations here, which I recommend checking out if you have any problems. Go to releases and download the latest release of syscon.zip. Open the zip, and just like with Mission Control, drag the folders to your SD card. And installation is now complete. Eject your Switch SD card and boot into Atmosphere. If you're using SysFTPD Lite, then you'll need to restart the console. Hold the power button for a few seconds, tap power options, and restart. And it'll reboot into Atmosphere, so don't worry about re-injecting the payload. Now, I'll show you some footage of me syncing the controllers and leave you with some gameplay. The DualShock 4, hold the share button and the PlayStation button, which will put it into sync mode, and it should connect. If it doesn't, try again. The DS4 felt surprisingly well for playing Smash Bros with. All of these controllers are registered as a pro controller. Unfortunately, using the Wii Remote on its side won't be viable for Smash Bros, because the D-pad, as you know, only triggers taunts. But we can plug in the Classic Controller Pro and play Smash Bros with it. Yeah. 
You can also plug in the nunchuck, but at the time of recording, I don't have tap jump on because I don't play with it, so I wasn't able to jump. It's fully playable, you can play Smash online or offline with a Wii Remote and nunchuck, just like in Brawl and Smash Wii U. Now here is the big question. Can we play Skyward Sword HD with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck? Well, you can't swing your sword, unfortunately, which is a bummer because it registers the Wii Remote and Nunchuck as a pro controller. And Deadly is planning to add support for registering the controllers as a Joy-Con and support for motion controls, but it'll be quite some time before that's complete. Because as far as I know, he hasn't started yet. So unfortunately, the dream of playing Skyward Sword HD with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck is dead for now. But that might change in the future, and if it does, I'll make another video on that. Now technically, you can play Skyward Sword HD with a classic controller. But there was one issue I faced. You can't use the joystick buttons. That is a problem because that means you can't stab with your sword, and you can't block with your shield or roll. Conveniently, the X and Y buttons aren't being used. So what I did, I used the built-in remapping feature for the Switch, and then I changed X to the left stick button and Y to the right stick button. So you can stab with Y, you can roll or guard with X, and it works pretty well. It's actually Pretty cool playing it this way because if Nintendo had included button controls in Skyward Sword on the Wii, this might be what it was like. We still have support for everything here that you could use on a standard Pro Controller. It's just remapped a bit. And then here we have my wired PS4 knockoff controller, which works. It works just like a standard USB controller. And like I said, all of these work at the same time too, so if you want to play Smash Bros and you only have two Joy-Con and a Pro Controller, but you got like five friends over, then you just give them a Wii Remote with a Classic Controller, or a Nunchuck, or your DS4 Controller, and there you go, you can play it with them. That is going to be all for the video guys, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. If you need some help with Switch modding, make sure to join my community Discord server in the description. Follow that Smash Guide with Atmosphere, and subscribe for more content. On your left, you'll see a tutorials playlist for Switch mods, and on your right, you'll see a video that YouTube recommends for you. Big shout out to my channel members for supporting me, and for you guys for supporting me if you've watched all the way until the end. Have a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this, and God bless. See ya!